So based upon the, uh, the our assumptions of the fourth degree stress function, apply the stress-related expanded conditions, we are able to solve for uh, the stress component like this. And now if we proceed, we want to find out is what is the displacement IELD. So basically here I want to look for is U and V, displacement in X direction, displacement in Y directions uh, of the beam. Okay. And here again, here we talk about the stress function that implied here we study is a two-dimensional problem. You don't expect any Z. Okay, that's a fundamental um, Starting from beginning with this is about the two-dimensional part right here. To find the displacement field, and we can we know that displacement is derived from strain. So here the partial u, partial x equal to epsilon x, and partial v, partial y equal to epsilon y to the strain, and then um, gamma xy and equal to partial u, partial y plus partial v, partial x, okay? So we know to determine the strain, uh, the sorry, the displacement, we start from Hooke's law. Uh, Hooke's law, this one, basically uh, implementing this one is sigma x divided by e, and this one is minus nu, sigma x divided by e, and this one basically is tau xy, divided by G, and here keep that in mind, we have such a relation, G equal to E divided by two, one plus nu. Okay, so to save writing in the following content, I simply just keep using G because that requires less writing. Okay, so we start from here. And so right now we have the stress, okay, so basically that one, let me plug in here, so that will be uh, equal to um, this one still has a lot of the writing here so let me do a little bit more uh, the uh, replacement so for this case the moment of inertia respect to the centroid uh, about the neutral axis okay and that one is 112 times width times 2c cube basically that is 2 C cube. Okay, that is an I. Okay, simply uh, using I. So let me use I for this case. Then this one will be equal to minus P X Y divided by I. And that <laughs> requires less writing. I simply replace that uh, to I here. So this one will be equal to minus P I cube uh, C squared minus Y squared. Okay, so with this one, so by plugging this one, this is minus P, X, Y, and E, I. Okay, so this one is um, um, mu, P, E, I, X, Y, and this one is uh, minus P, IG, uh, IG not Instagram. Uh, okay. So here, from here, you can see basically here we have a partial derivative of the displacement component, and that as a function of x, y. So proceed the detailed calculation. We can do the indefinite integral individually, and we see what happens. Okay. So from here, u is equal to minus p. We just be a patient a little bit. And x squared y plus, for example, alpha y. And this one v equal to, again, to the indefinite integral. And mu p and 2 ei and x y squared plus beta x. Uh, beta alpha are the integration constant. For u, because we take the indefinite integral over x, so we have an integration constant that should be function of y, right? We make that general, good, okay? 
And now for this case, um, for this one, we have the UV appear. We simply plug in the UV, the template of the UV onto the left hand side and must equal to the right hand side for the third equation that provides us additional condition, hopefully can solve for alpha and beta. So let me plug in here. So basically that is uh, equal to on the left hand side, plug in UV and PX squared to EI plus partial alpha, partial y, partial p, and two ei, y square, plus partial beta, partial x, equal to minus p. On the right hand side, I copy the information. Okay, so this is a function of y, and this is a function of x. So here I'm going to show you, uh, kind of the, remind you a uh, solution technique. So this is the equation of function x, y, and they are equal. So we, re we group the terms involving x only, and then we group the terms involving y only, and we see what happens. Okay, so for this term, I'm going to group the terms regarding x, so that is this term, and this term, okay, so that means is minus px squared to ei plus partial beta, partial x, and then I'm going to group the terms regarding y, and that is this term, this term, and this term, okay, so that will be partial alpha, Now remaining, we only have a constant, so I keep the constant on the right hand side, so that is minus p c squared 2 ig. Okay, so come to here, you can see this is the term of the uh, function of x, this is the term function of y, that equal, uh, together must be uh, equal to a constant. So the only possible way uh, is this term is a function of x, that is a constant. This term is a function of y, that is a constant. Both constant at the top together, that could be possible constant, right? That's the only reasonable uh, pattern. So here, let me say this is, let me say this is a constant a, and let me say this is a constant b, okay? So in this case, uh, we have is this a plus b. Let me write that here. a plus b equal to this term minus p c squared two i g. Okay. So keep this in mind, and then what is our a? And our a equal to this one. Okay. So if this is equal to this one, that means I'm going to again do the one more. We definitely the integral over x and over the, this equation to obtain the alpha and beta. Right now, our job is to find out what is the alpha and what is beta. Okay? So you know the strategy. The whole calculation will be a little bit tedious, but I hope you keep the big pictures. Good? Okay. So for these equations, let me call this equation one. So let me call this is equation two. So equation one, uh, we do the integral uh, on uh, x, okay? 
So that means we have beta x will be equal to p at 3 and 6 ei plus ax plus a1. Okay, so a1 is additional interpersonal constant together with a. Here we have two unknowns. In a similar way, we integrate the indefinite integral of the second equation over y. Okay, that is a function of y only. I want to get explicit form for alpha. So, the alpha and beta and allow me not to rewrite everything so can I just plug in here so this one alpha this one will be equal to minus mu p you can write it up quickly okay and beta this one. Good. So right now we have attained our displacement field. General solution, my please. And how to solve for here we have four unknowns. And we have four unknowns. Uh, we don't know the B and we don't know B1, I, and A1. So again, to solve for this kind of the general, uh, the interpretation constant, everyone knows that it must come from the appropriate boundary conditions. So for cantilever beam, uh, this is a general pattern, the general solutions. And for, sorry, for beam, for the beam under bending, uh, and now we apply the displacement related boundary conditions. So, can I write up here? So here uh, for uh, displacement related boundary conditions, and here let me label continuously, say label uh, as a boundary condition for yeah. At least right now, um, before the boundary condition for, we know the A plus B, that is the equation we derived from our derivations, so we keep this in mind. So here we only need, because here we have how many unknowns? A, B, and A1, and B1. We need four equations. And this provides us the first one, so we need three more from boundary conditions, right? Okay, so the boundary conditions for the four is this. We'll look at here. So let me assume the whole length is equal to L, for cantilever beams, we know the U displacement equal to zero and V equal to zero at X equal to L. So that means starting measure from here to here and for example at that point, um, Y equal to zero, say we pick up the Y equal to zero at the middle point here. The whole displacement are constrained. Good. So this provides the first boundary condition, second boundary conditions. The third boundary condition is this. We know for cantilever beam, let me use this model. When the cantilever beam deformed, it deformed like this. So you can see the slope here is also equal to zero. So that provides us the third one. So partial u, partial x equals zero at x, y equal to l and zero. Uh, 
uh, not partial u, partial x, partial v, partial y. Diffraction, the slope of the diffraction equal to zero. Good? Okay. So from here, these three boundary conditions provide us three equations. Plug, uh, in addition to this one, four equations. We are able to solve for A equal to minus PL square and 2EI and B equal to the wrong writing, PC squared and 2IG plus PL squared uh, L squared 2EI and A1 equal to P and 3, 3 EI and B1 equal to 0. So up to here, we completely, if you plug in those numbers into here, we solve for the uh, displacement field that is specific for Kennedy movie. And for the boundary condition for, for these displacement related boundary conditions, I only apply the boundary condition at here, at the middle point. So that means for this problem, we can say it's over constrained. Because for any other point other than we selected, we have not used in our formulation. Right? Okay, so basically that is the note provided to you. For the boundary condition for we applied is only applied at this location as I highlight here. So if you constrain, if you, in your finite element uh, model, if you only constrain that point, that should be sufficient for you to obtain the unique solutions. And of course, you have option to constrain the whole other point, and you might obtain a little bit different solutions. Okay, so basically when we run the modeling, we first concern is whether the solution is feasible. That means the solution would have been produced from a well-constrained model. For this example, if you constrain one point, that should be sufficient. Okay? So that is the whole thing. Um, I think Max, we've done.